much we were looking forward to seeing that sign to say we're coming into a town to see a group of riders gathered and obviously Dubbo had the biggest group of riders it was very exciting very thrilling for the riders so thank you very much but really I just want to do a very quick few thank yous firstly I didn't have a committee and I said to, to Mark Riley the general manager do you mind if I get a couple of the staff and council just do a couple of little things to help and he said that'd be fine I'm not sure that it actually equated to a couple of little things so if you talk to Susan Wade, Joe O'Day and Marianne O'Shea, that were the three main ones to do just a little bit more. Traffic management plan was probably this thick, I think, Sue, so thank you to those three who did a power work. Even things like sorting out the jerseys for me to get distributed to all the people to make sure the right sizes went to the right people. So can I give a round of applause to those three first? <laughs> and then I want to introduce you to Team O'Rock, who has been on the road together for the last six days. And it seems like an incredibly long time ago that we gathered at the old, uh, the Dubbo Base Hospital on the front steps, the old entrance there, to go off with a great amount of excitement and enthusiasm and not sore bottoms on Monday morning. And, and we've come back with just as much excitement and enthusiasm, but sore bottoms, obviously. But the, the riders have had a great time for most of it. Some days are pretty hot and pretty long. But for the most part, we're on the ride and we're out there doing what we love, which is just riding bikes and, and doing great things. But our support crew, I want to introduce first, because there is no way we could have done what we did with our support crew. And you, you don't think about the support crew that much. We're out riding, we're concentrating. But each stop, we've got this whole smorgasbord of very healthy, very nice food, ice, water, whatever we need is all laid out. And then when we're finished, we jump on our bikes and keep going again. They've got to pack that up, get it all ready, and then drive off and get ahead for the next one. So I'll just go through the support crew. Firstly, we've got the captain of the team was someone who could not be better suited to it, take a schoolmaster, or an old headmaster, sorry, and give him a bunch of kids on bikes, which is what we felt like some of the time, and he's in his element. He's barking at us at 5am to get out of bed, he's barking at us at each break to get back on our bike, he just liked barking at us, I think, most of the time. So can we give a big round of applause to, to our school uh, our school captain, now team captain, Paul Loxley. <laughs> you're going to come up and see what Loxley is. Where is Loxley? Uh, I want these guys to come up the front. Okay. Bring you along there because you can walk. You've got to put your beer down, like So, of course, and I'll run through the rest of the team. On the team, we had um, two very important people who had an incredibly boring job. The first one had to sit in the in the back car at 25 kilometres an hour for 1,125 kilometres. For 1,125 kilometres. And that's tough, but on top of that, when we pull up in the morning, lunchtime, at night time, she'd have to weigh everyone in the team. We'd have to make sure that everyone's blood sugar levels were right, so she's pricking everyone's finger and taking their blood sugar. And then, on top of that, she'd sell hats and drink water bottles. So please give a round of applause to Robin Coulton. Yeah. Oh, she had to check everyone's butt. I didn't know that. She checked mine. <laughs> I missed out there. Can you just have a look. <laughs> um, the other driver of the front car, again, incredibly boring job, sitting there at 25 k's an hour. And then on top of that, each night when we pulled up somewhere, we had an auction, and we had to have someone to organise the components of the auction, take the money off people, make sure the right people had paid the right money, and then finally get to bed after all that was done and the cyclists were already in bed, and then get up the next morning and drive along at 25 kilometres an hour. So a thank you to our front car driver, Pam Dickerson. Yeah. The, next, the next one I wasn't sure whether to put in the support crew or the rider crew, because he did a bit of both. He loved the excitement of riding so much, he jumped on the bike, and he did some days where he knocked over 80 k's, which is pretty, pretty impressive for anyone. And then other days he was back in the car doing support crew. But most importantly, he was reporting back to the radio station back here to say what we were doing and where we are up to along the way. And, and I, I think it's fair to say he had an absolute buzz along the way and just looked around the scenery. He was riding in today with us. He just said, how good is this? This is just fantastic. So please welcome Alex Mitchell. I know we're... we're oh, sorry, 120 in a day. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, he had the next day off, obviously. <laughs> uh, then the next one, you've obviously been, uh, a lot of people have been following Facebook, keeping up to date with photos, oh, videos. Uh, We've had one man on this trip, the official photographer, who has just been everywhere taking photos from the front car, the back car, the, the food car, anywhere you look, you'd look up in a tree, there'd be this guy <laughs> about to take a photo. So please welcome Chris Muir. Can you? Hey. 
Yeah, so how do you take a photo of this one, Chris? <laughs> I might stay here. <laughs> um, for, everyone knows Chris there. Um, so for every ying, there is a yang. And for the ying of Paul Oxley, we had the yang, our other support team member. Paul barking, making sure everyone's doing everything. If you wanted something, you just quietly go over to the other team member and say, don't tell Locks, but can I get this thing, please? And if Locks didn't hear you, it was okay. If he heard you, you are in trouble. But the, the quiet, calming influence of the next support crew member was absolutely needed against the frantic nature of Paul Locks. <laughs> so please welcome Kim Williams. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think he's that calm and going to sleep. Hello, <laughs> um, so that's our that's our support crew. That's our support crew. So thank you. Stay there, please. That that's incredible. Thank you to those six support crew who just did everything for us. As I said before, the meals, breakfast, organising accommodation, putting people in rooms, making sure they went to their correct rooms. Paul, is that right? <laughs> and so they did an incredible job. And again, they had to sit in a car for just about all day. It was very hard for them because you couldn't get out and stretch your legs. But it was air conditioned. It was air conditioned. Yeah. That's a good point, Sam. That's a very good point. Sam, the windows were down. <laughs> when we drove past them, Sam. So now I'd like to introduce the riders. And, and this, the riders and the crew, I think, make up an incredibly inspirational team. So I just want to run through the riders. The first rider is someone that, you know, he had some doubts himself whether he'd actually make it, because it's, it's a pretty hard slog, and he's got a couple of years under his belt. But he went out there and he attacked it, and I think it's fair to say, and I have said this to this gentleman, it's fair to say that his approach on the first day, his experience and wisdom on the first day, keeping all the youthful enthusiasm, especially with a couple of the Coon of Arabin guys, keeping that bottled, to make sure that we didn't all burn out on the Coonabarabin Hills on the first day, I think was largely responsible for all of us getting through this incredible journey. So please make him welcome, our federal member for Parks, Mark Colton. <laughs> As he hobbles up on stage. We, we learn a lot about people on this trip, and certainly we learn just how good a team is. And I always say that the, the team is not a word, team is an acronym. Together, everyone achieves more. And I think in this trip, we learned how much that was the case because people would ebb and flow through the, through the day, through the minute sometimes, in terms of how they felt and what people would do for each other. The next team member we, we assigned, actually, I don't know we've assigned, I think he grabbed it, took the radio on the first day, and he was fantastic on the radio, but he just was a calming influence. But when someone needed a bit of a hand, he might drop back to one of the vehicles, grab some water, bring it forward to someone. He might just give someone a bit of a push up the hill. He was just there as a as a great, he's a great rider anyway, but just as a great influence for the other guys and to help all that team out. So please welcome Tim Fernie. We had some experienced riders and some inexperienced riders on this trip. One of the things that was a real buzz, but also could have been a bit dangerous, was when we had some inexperienced riders join, because every LGA provided a couple of inexperienced, or not inexperienced, a couple of riders for from their LGA to represent them. And that was that was fantastic to have those people along, and it really engaged every community. But some of those riders hadn't ridden much before. The next gentleman really took it upon himself to take some of them under his wing, instruct them about how to sit in a peloton, how to draft, just really work out how that all worked and make sure that they were familiar and comfortable. So I think it was that great leadership. He's done a lot of riding himself, so he just imparted some of that knowledge and they all went away from it having had a better experience because they learned how to sit in a peloton. So please make welcome Keith Harris. Yeah. The next gentleman I, I actually rang a couple of months ago and said, I'd like $10,000 for you to commit some incredible pain to your backside. And, and when I finally convinced him to be a major sponsor along with the, the company that he, that he sells vehicles for, um, he, he thought that was great to sponsor this event, but still wasn't convinced that he'd either be able to do it or really wanted to do it, to be honest. So, so he thought about that for a long time, but, but having this gentleman along for the ride was, was I, I think, Again, that, that experience that you have from someone that's successful in their own life and bringing that to the table. But also, he was often our team spokesman of some of the night functions and, and represented our team with great aplomb. Because I, believe it or not, I didn't talk throughout the whole trip. So, not, not, <laughs> it wasn't just the fact that I had a cold, but, but I really thought this was important to engage the communities and make sure the team was known. So, um, the, the next gentleman was really our team spokesperson as the major sponsor for all those functions. And just represented our team with great dignity and integrity. So please make welcome Dave Hayes.
There is one person that I would say is the doyen of bike rides in the world. And when I first talked about this bike ride, I thought, who am I going to ring just to maybe get a few hints off, a few tips off? And there was one person that came to mind. Now, this person didn't just say, here's a few ideas and here's a few tips. He said, by the way, I've got a trailer for you. I've got the flashing lights for you. I've got the signs for you. Anything we wanted, this gentleman had. Just from his experience in bike rides, he accumulated so much gear. It saved thousands of dollars that can go straight into the patient accommodation unit. More than that, I think his knowledge and experience about how to plan a bike ride, anything I didn't know, he, he probably got sick of me in the end. And as I said, I didn't have a committee, but he kind of became my de facto committee because anything I didn't know about bike riding, I'd ring this gentleman and say, how do you do this? What do you do about that? On the bike ride, he was the mother hen. He made sure everyone was rounded up. Locks thought he was always last and slow, but he wasn't. He was just rounding everyone up to make sure everyone was there and everyone was okay. So please make welcome the incredibly experienced, incredibly knowledgeable on bike rides, Andrew McKay. We, we were very fortunate that we had a couple of late entries come in from Coonabarabin, and, and one of those guys was uh, a, a guy I didn't know at all before the ride started, and you know, you get to know guys as you go along. Um, this guy just, I had trouble riding beside him because his thigh muscles were so big, he kept bouncing into me as he, as he rode along. Incredibly fit guy, but he still was quite happy to sit there, you know, didn't get frustrated with the pace. They had a couple of sprints at various times just to, you know, show off a bit of their speed, and, and we had a little girl on our team who managed to beat them once or twice, so. Um, but, but just an incredible guy who was quite happy to sit at the front all day. There were two of them, and I'll, I'll talk about one first. Two of them quite happy to sit at the front all day and just take the win, take the pressure off the rest of the guys, and that just helped out all the inexperienced guys and the, and the guys that weren't as good. It, it was an incredible help. But still, on top of that, when there'd be a sprint on, he'd be the one who actually won most of the sprints around. Not that it was meant to be a race, but, you know, kids and their bikes, they can't help themselves. So please make him welcome, Arthur Norton. <laughs> See, look at him, they're bulging at the side there. <laughs> The, the, the next gentleman had a, a, some concerns when I spoke to him originally about whether he could do the ride or not. And, and he said, oh, look, I might just do it for a little bit and pull out and have a bit of a seat. And I said, no, no, you're not. You're going to keep riding and you keep going. This guy, as much as the two Coonabarabin guys sat on the front, this guy was just had the power of an ox. He would just sit there, he'd plough through the wind for us, he'd make a huge windbreak for us, which was very nice of him. <laughs> but he just kept ploughing on and just did every one of those 1,125 kilometres. And on top of that, if you want something done on your bike at the end of the day, your tyres pumped up or something like that, he was there to help out. I don't know if he was always happy to help out, but he was always there to, to help out. So please make welcome Sam Peacock. The other, the other part of our Coonabarabin connection was a guy who thought we were actually riding a little bit too fast at times, so he managed to get a flat tyre every day for the first four days. <laughs> one of those might have been a prank flat, but anyway, we'll, we'll get over that one. <laughs> but, but again, he was a part of that Coonabarabin connection that would just plow into that wind, and it just makes such a difference to the guys that aren't as fit when someone is prepared to sit there on the front for hours at a time, and we couldn't hold them back. We keep saying, slow down, guys, you know, keep slowing, slowing down, because they were just happy. They were like pigs in mud. They were just loving it. So um, thank you for your hard work too, John Tilbrook. <laughs> now, you may have noticed I went in alphabetical order there in both those groups. Well, I hope you did anyway. But there's one that I missed in alphabetical order. And let me just say, and you can probably work out who, who, who probably work out who it is. Let just go to that one. Something yeah. happened. You can probably work out who it is because there's one person who's missing there. But l let me just say that I thought about The Wizard of Oz when I thought about this one when we're writing in today. And in The Wizard of Oz, as you know the story, the lion wanted the wizard to give him a heart, and the tin man, sorry, courage, the tin man wanted a heart, and the straw man wanted a brain. And when I was talking about this ride with a number of people, they, they had doubts, it's fair to say, and they were concerned about being able to do 230 kilometres in a day. Well, that's fair enough. I was concerned about that as well. And in The Wizard of Oz, as you all know, what they discovered in themselves was they could actually do it already, the, the straw man, the lion and the tin man. But the wizard didn't have magical powers but gave them that belief. Once we had this person sign up for this ride, suddenly... Everyone else in the ride had the belief. Now, she's not a wizard, 
very close. She's very good. She's not a wizard, but she just gave everyone that confidence. So that was even before the ride started. It made a difference to the team morale, and that was absolutely fantastic. Once we got on the ride, the boost that this person gave, not only to our team members, but everyone that joined in, to be riding alongside a Commonwealth Games dual gold medalist was incredibly exciting for these people. Some of these people hadn't ridden a bike for 20 years. But then when we'd come to a bit of a hill, we a bit of a wind, we'd look around and that person that might have joined in, which they might have been a great bike rider, was suddenly still beside us. And we'd look back a little bit further and there's Megan with a hand just pushing them slowly along up the hill. It got a bit rude at some stages. Some of the guys thought it was such a good ride they stopped pedalling themselves. So, <laughs> poor old Megan arms almost broke, I think. But, but to have someone of the experience and the stature and the credentials as this person on the ride just lifted everything in the ride. And we'd go and ask her questions about what happens with different things and just using her experience was unbelievable. But obviously using her legs, ploughing into the wind when we needed it, but also just keeping those guys pushing along. There's a couple of uh, GMs and mares that got a bit of a push. I see one GM down the back there who got a bit of a, <laughs> bit of a push along the way there. And they just thought that was incredible. So thank you very much to Megan Dunn. I don't know what she was thinking when I rang into the bunch of middle-aged men who were going to go on an 1100 kilometre bike ride, do you want to join us? And she said yes. So uh, maybe her hearing's not that good and she didn't hear me properly. The other thing, hold on. See, this has been like a week. <laughs> the other thing I just want to mention before I give it over to the boss is the involvement from the councils, the mayors and the jams, and there's a couple I see in the crowd, I hope I'm not missing any, I've got Billy McInerney down the back there, I saw Matthew Slacksmith before, Gary Woodman, uh, Dougie Batten, uh, so just the involvement they had, they all got out there with the yellow, you can turn around and see Bill there in his, in his yellow shirt, modelling there, thank you Bill, and, and yellow pants, um, just to see those guys getting out there on their bikes, Matt Slacksmith takes the award for the best bike, he had a three-wheeler with a trailer, there, there were no beers in the trailer though, so I was a bit disappointed about that one, but um, you know, there was just such a variety of those guys, but all of those communities, we thought they did a great job and we were thanking them for being so involved, they thought we were doing a great job by coming through their community, and I think that's the importance of a ride like this, it's not about Dubbo being Dubbo, it's about Dubbo being a player in the region, and this region is huge, 188,000 square kilometres, that's what it's all about, about this region coming together, and if, if nothing else from this ride, obviously we've raised a lot of money, but if nothing else, it really demonstrates how together this entire region is. So I will ask two other people to talk, because I'm being tapped on the back by Paul anyway, I'll just get our team captain to talk briefly, because I had no choice in that, and then I'll just ask our rider, Captain Megan, to say a few words. Thanks, Lox. Thanks, Thanks Manny. Um... I didn't want to say too much, but I think it would have been wrong of us not to acknowledge uh, Matthew's participation as a rider. Um, I think uh, five years ago, six years ago, we went to the desert with Mick Harvey and, and Maddie, and we learned a lot about things we didn't know about, which was one of the things that was really good um, over the last six days. But Matthew, for, to have the foresight to organise and come up with the idea that for something that was so um, needed by our community also, but the communities that we support and surround us was um, a truly magnificent idea and something that would be, make us cohesive as a, as a group of councils. Um, Matt has already thanked the GMs and the mayors that are here today and I'd like to, to thank them as well. We were warmly welcomed everywhere, but as a writer, Matty was always there. Matty did a few other things. Apart from um, his bounce bombs and the other things that he ate, um, he, he would do interviews on the bike. I've never seen a guy riding into a headwind, talking into an iPhone, doing an interview or talking to somebody else just to keep it going. But um, I think Matthew deserves the recognition and the thanks. He worked as hard as anybody on the ride. Um, I honestly take my hat off to every one of these people behind us um, for what they did. We had some horrible days. Um, it wasn't nice, but they got down in some fairly difficult circumstances and they did something that they've actually... I think in the years to come, they'll be able to look back and say, they, they'll look at the photo we took in Warren this morning and say, I was there and I did that. Um, I know that I was very pleased to be part of it. I wasn't as bad as Matthew made me out to be. <laughs> and Kim wasn't as nice, but, um, <laughs> but we had a wonderful time. But I'd like you to give your hand for Maddie Dickerson, please. And, 
And uh, can I just say about this young lady, I'm lucky enough to say that uh, when I was the boss of South Primary, she went through South. And to Aussie and Joy, she's a wonderful young woman. She spoke um, at most of the places we were. And not only is she humble, the integrity, the words that come out of her mouth, she's nothing but a pleasure and she's ours. Megan Dunn. welcoming us home it's been it's been such a long week so it's to get such a humble welcoming home it's just absolutely lovely um, I won't take up too much of your time but I'd like to say a huge thank you to our whole team which includes our support crew uh, without them it you know our job as a writer can sometimes be so easy to just get on and and paddle away so thank you to Paul Kim uh, Robin Pam Chris uh, hope I haven't forgot anyone but the support crew makes our job so easy. They, um, coming from a rider, to pull up and have our food all laid out for us every 30 kilometres is absolutely fantastic and we can just keep on going on. Uh, to the riders, it's been an absolute pleasure to ride with you boys and um, yeah, it's an absolute honour. Out of all the teams I've rode for, it's, you know, it's definitely up there. So um, it's for a fantastic cause and uh, it shows what a beautiful community we are that, you know, here in Dubbo, we, we don't need the... Um, accommodation, you know, we have homes here and to ride out into the communities and truly see that um, the, where they are living, they do need when they come to Dubbo to use our facilities, they don't have anywhere to stay and it, it would definitely put some financial strain on them to have to then go and pay for accommodation in hotels and motels so to be able to provide this for them and to be a part of it to raise some money is absolutely fantastic so I'd like to thank all our sponsors and um, especially our major one Toyota and Dubbo City Toyota with Dave. So thank you very much and thank you for everyone turning out today to support this wonderful cause. Thanks, Megan. And, and Lox talks about Megan's hum, humble nature. When we were in Narromine this morning, we were just doing our way in a, a lady came along and said, oh, you know, you look pretty fit. You must do a bit of this riding, do you? And, yeah. <laughs> and Megan just went, oh, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so that's the humble nature. But look, thank you. What a great crew. This is an inspirational team. What, what's been achieved this week has been fantastic. And thank you to the entire community for being part of that and letting us be part of, of this community. So um, don't forget, you can still donate donations online. And there's a ball tonight with a few more things up for auction, including Billy McAnally's yellow jersey. <laughs> thank you, everyone. <laughs>